What's going on guys, this is Rob and welcome back to the Rumor Roundup, our weekly series where we keep you guys updated on all the news and rumors that you may have missed over the course of the week even though we were lazy and didn't do it last week. So, we're opening this episode up with something that's not really the most important thing ever in the history of the world, but is kind of cool at least in comparison to what we're going to be talking about later on in the episode, because Wanda might be meeting the X-Men. <laughs> God, I'm so hyped. We are opening this up with the fact that Spider-Man No Way Home, the trailer for that movie, has actually outperformed Avengers Endgame. Now, that doesn't really surprise me, to be honest with you guys. It doesn't really shock me. And the reason why is because the anticipation for Avengers Endgame had kind of been going for like 10 years, right? Going all the way back to the first Avengers movie, if we really want to be specific about it, Loki had an Infinity Stone, we saw Thanos in a post credit scene, so we were kind of like, okay, so like putting two and two together, we're gonna get a, end up getting like the Infinity Gauntlet. And shortly after that, like all the pieces started to fall into place. So in reality, we knew that was coming. With Spider-Man No Way Home, it's been nothing but rumors, right? Like nothing had been confirmed. And even then, the hype for the movie had just kind of taken on a life of its own. I mean, you guys, you guys know the feeling, right? I mean, you guys remember this feeling? I mean, you guys had it like three days ago. <laughs> <laughs> this feeling was this idea that like something big was gonna happen in Spider-Man No Way Home because a lot of big things have happened that are going to affect Spider-Man No Way Home and a lot of big things have happened since the end of Avengers Endgame. See, running up to Avengers Endgame, there were some cool things that happened, but nothing monumental or landmark. It was a bunch of individual character story arcs. That's really all it was. The formation of the Avengers, the coming of Ultron, different things like that, and it was kind of cool. But since the ending of Avengers in game, the big question that we've always had is what comes next? It's the events of WandaVision, right? Wanda altering reality, becoming the Scarlet Witch, and then going out into the multiverse, right? You guys remember the WandaVision show? We were just, we were all on pins and needles and everybody wanted to see Mephisto, but it left us with this idea of, holy crap, something big is coming. And then you go into Loki, and then the multiverse comes back after we meet Immortus. And so all these things kind of coalesced in such a short amount of time that by the time we realized that Spider-Man No Way Home was going to tie into some multiversal shenanigans and then couple that with the rumors that Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield were going to appear in the film, well, hell, it's no wonder the trailer outperformed Avengers Endgame. <laughs> I would argue Spider-Man No Way Home is the single most anticipated trailer that's been released by Marvel to date because it's just the one thing people want to know about. People wanted to see what was going to be going on in the movie or at least have some indication of what was happening. So it doesn't surprise me the trailer did that well, but it is cool to know that it did. But going into our second bit of news here, the photo leaks for Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man and Spider-Man No Way Home have been scrubbed seemingly from the internet by Sony. Now, this can only mean one of two things, right? It means the rumors are true or the rumors are false. Good job, Rob. Way to be an absolute genius here. <laughs> what I mean by that is that in this day and age, it's very easy for inaccurate information to be disseminated out there, right? To kind of get out there into the world and paint an incorrect picture. So this could very well just be Sony doing damage control, right? Just be like, no, 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 no. Andrew Garfield's not gonna be in this movie. We don't want people you know, circulating around photos that indicate that he is. But the other part of this is that coming off the heels of the trailer, he is gonna be there, right? Because I'm sure all of you guys saw that leaked trailer. I mean, Sony tried to take that down with a quickness, right? When that Spider-Man trailer leaked on TikTok, dude, it was like that. There were entire accounts that were just being shut down, just, just done, right? I mean, at that point, it's on the internet. There's no way to remove it in its entirety. But based on what we saw with that super grainy, low quality trailer, it was legitimately the trailer that we eventually saw without all the visual effects. So it's entirely possible that these, these kind of set clips or these set photos of Andrew Garfield on Spider-Man that he is actually gonna be in it. And it's Sony just rushing to get that stuff taken down as fast as they can, which would really only do what we expect it to do, which is confirm that Andrew Garfield is really going to be in Spider-Man 3. Now, I don't know if that's true or not, right? I don't know if, if, if Andrew Garfield's gonna be in Spider-Man No Way Home. There's no way to know until we basically end up seeing him in the trailer, or if he's just like on the set in a Spider-Man costume, taking a selfie alongside Tobey Maguire and Tom Holland. I doubt that, that Disney or Sony or, or Marvel Studios would let that happen, but it'd be amazing if it did. <laughs> 
It would be awesome if it did. Dude, that would that would probably perform better than the Ellen DeGeneres selfie that crashed Twitter. You guys remember that when Ellen DeGeneres did that? It was the craziest thing ever. But nonetheless, right, this seems to possibly confirm that Andrew Garfield is indeed going to be in the new Spider-Man film. So not overly important here, but it is kind of a cool little thing. And getting into our third little tidbit here, again, this is a pretty kind of a scant episode, right? Except for our final topic, which is cool. Uh, Venom 2 is not delayed. For those of you guys who don't know what's going on with this, rumors have been going around that Venom 2 has been delayed, then it wasn't delayed, now it is delayed. And there's been a lot of speculation as to why. A lot of people are saying that because of what's going on in Spider-Man No Way Home, Tom Hardy may or may not have a role in that movie. So they're delaying the film to make sure that what goes on in Spider-Man Man 2 segues into Venom 2, so the movie actually makes sense when you see it. There's a lot of people out there, which I believe Sony's part of that crowd, and saying that's not the case. There is belief out there that the, the COVID-19 Delta variant, it's what's leading to the movie being postponed in the hopes that more people will be vaccinated, more people will go see it in the theaters, that kind of a thing. There's a lot of speculation going on here regarding why the movie was potentially delayed, but Sony ultimately came out and said, no, it's not, right? It only came out 19 hours ago and said, nope, the movie is not delayed, it's gonna come out on its scheduled time, which is great, right? I was a huge fan of the first Venom movie. I absolutely loved it. Uh, and I'm really excited to see what they do with the second one because Carnage looks amazing. But to put this to bed, the movie will come out on time. Now, to the meat and potatoes of this video, and probably the only reason any of you guys clicked on it, which is the single most important thing, rumors are abound that Scarlet Witch, Wanda, is gonna face off against somebody from the Fox X-Men universe. Now, not specifically the X-Men universe, the Fox-verse. What's the difference? Remember, Fox owned the Fantastic Four movie rights. So honestly, we really didn't see anything from the Fantastic Four since that terrible Fan Four stick movie. It's okay, Michael B. Jordan. You're an amazing actor. We give you a pass. Everybody else, you are bad. So here's the thing about the, the Fantastic Four film, or at least uh, Wanda and the Fantastic Four. This presents a lot of possibilities, right? We don't know what role Wanda's gonna be playing in Doctor Strange 2, but presumably she's gonna be moving her way, making her way around the multiverse, probably trying to find her kids wherever her kids happen to be. And there's a lot of possibilities on who she could be facing off against because there's a lot of magical beings out there with a lot of power. Now, if you guys are interested, we can make a video on some of these really, really powerful powerful beings and who our picks are for who Wanda would face off against. But to give you guys a little indication of what could possibly happen here, there's characters like Dr. Doom, there's Ileana Rasputin, also known as Magic. Of course, Magneto would probably be the fan choice for her to fight because the whole thing with them and, and him being her dad has kind of been off and on, right? If you go and you read Vision and Scarlet Witch Volume 1, that the whole story, that little mini series, focuses around the idea that Wanda is the daughter of Magneto. But then you go forward from Marvel, probably about four or five decades and you end up finding out that her and Quicksilver are not the children of Magneto. So that's kind of been off and on, off and on, off and on. And Marvel has changed that a lot over the years. The important thing here is that the relationship between Magneto and Scarlet Witch is one that people would like to see, even if he's not necessarily the biological father of Wanda, because that's something to keep in mind here, right? It'd be very easy for the MCU to come back at some previous point in time or some future point in time and say, the parents that Wanda thought were her biological parents, that's not true. That is, they're not it, right? That she actually had biological parents, Eric Lyncher and most likely Magda, who was her biological mother in the comics, and that ultimately they ended up having to leave for whatever reason, either because Magneto became a villain after his wife died, I don't know, any number of reasons, right? I mean, technically, his, he lost his mind after his first kid died, his wife was pregnant with Vision and Scarlet Witch, and then she took off when he killed like an entire village of people out of revenge, and then she ended up having Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch later on, and Magneto just didn't know about it for years and years and years, but it's entirely possible they could do that, right? Come back at a future point in time and say, actually, Wanda and Quicksilver's parents are not the people that you saw in WandaVision, it's actually these guys over here, one of whom is Magneto. That's possible. I don't know if they'll necessarily do that, but people want to see that relationship in the movies, right? They want to see, even if he's not necessarily her father, the two of them meet and encounter each other. Plus, it'd make for a pretty interesting battle. I mean, truth to tell, if we're really being honest with ourselves, given the level of power that Wanda has in the MCU, the fact that she's a multiversal force, the only person that could probably stand against her would be Jean Grey with the Phoenix, right? Magneto would get absolutely crushed. Even somebody like Thanos with the Infinity Gauntlet would get wrecked by, by Wanda because she's now multiversal level, right? She's not a universal power anymore. She's a multiversal power now, which means she transcends the power of an Infinity Gauntlet, which is kind of bonkers when you think about it. But it'd be a cool thing to see, right? Having her face off against Jean 
Grey with the power of a phoenix and just that absurd level of magical energy being emanated around. There's a lot of possible options there. The important thing and the real big takeaway from this is this looks like, if it's true, the first beginnings of when we'll start seeing what used to be Fox properties that are now owned by Disney coming into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Now, whether or not they'll be mainstays in the sense that we'll see her fight like, like Silver Surfer or Galactus or something like that, and then like we get to the end of the movie and then Galactus will return in Fantastic Four. We don't know if we'll really get anything like that. I mean, I presume we will, I don't know why we wouldn't. And they might just kind of be using it as a bit of a test bed, just to kind of see how people respond to these things. Or it could very well just be like a five minute moment and that's it, right? Like we pick up with Wanda as she's fighting somebody from the Fox first and the fight's over like five minutes after we begin that scene and then you move on to whatever the next thing is, right? As she's passing through that universe. We don't necessarily know. I mean, honestly, if, if it's not Jean Grey, my pick would be Professor X just because of the relationship between the two during the events of House of M, right? For those of you guys who don't know what that is, during House of M, when Wanda had basically warped and, and rewrote all of reality, the way she was able to do that was one, because of the power she had, but two, because she kidnapped Professor X and then took over his powers to read the subconscious thoughts of everybody on earth and then rewrite reality to give them what they essentially had always wanted even if they didn't necessarily know that's what they actually wanted. That's where the whole House of M universe came from. But that kind of relationship right there could be pretty important. It'd be pretty cool, especially if what they're doing is building the groundwork for House of M later on down the line. And we'll talk more about that potential when we do this video on who Wanda could be fighting from the Fox universe, assuming you guys are interested in it. Again, let us know down in the comment section if you guys wanna see something like that. But again, this is a pretty short episode, guys. Not a whole ton of news and rumors out there. Honestly, so much has been going on in the aftermath of the Spider-Man trailer, there's not really a whole lot there. I mean, there is stuff like Shane Chi said he wants to work with the Guardians of the Galaxy, but I mean, who cares about that in comparison to like the Spider-Man trailer rumors, right? I mean, nobody cares, right? At least not right now anyway. Give it like two weeks. Everybody's gonna start caring again, especially when we get closer to the release of the film. But the important thing here is that it's not the most packed episode there ever was, but it really is all just kind of focused on the aftermath of the Spider-Man trailer. So with that being said, guys, let us know down in the comments who you want to see Wanda face off against in the MCU from the Fox properties, and we will catch you all later. Peace.